it's a bit of an air filter. So, uh, but... Jamie, are you interested in those? No. no. You're not? No. The old, the old rear panels here. You what? brought me two rotten wings, and I can get these brand new. Oh, no. He don't want them. And that's not the worst of it. No. All right, Jamie. Well, what about the roof? The wrong bit of the roof. Well, what do you mean when you say wrong? What, what bit's wrong? We had a little chat about what was above the windscreen. A piece of metal goes above the windscreen between the roof. This is a nice big bit of fiberglass. And uh, what about the uh, seat base? Isn't... There's a few more bits to that. So that's only half of that. I mean, if we got you the other bits of the seat base, because we did take them off, would you be happy? Yes. What would you give me uh, for it then? You know, like the, the bonnet and the, uh, the little bits for the seats and that. A little bit off the uh, roof. A gamble. I'll tell you, 150 for the bonnet. 150. 20 quid for the rest. That's Wait. 170 nicker, Jamie. You have got a deal, Jamie, because it is embarrassing. It is a little. Yeah. I'm embarrassed for us. He packed almost everything wrong. We'd got the bonnet, which, yeah, it's a given. We've got one thing right, but we bought the wrong bit of the roof. We bought panels that Jamie didn't want. It's not really what I would class as me at my finest hour. Thanks hour. ever so much, Jamie. That's 170 quid for bonnet, seat adjusters, some assorted extras, and, well, the least said about the roof, the better. I've just spent £170 with the guys, primarily for the bonnet, so I think it was going to clean up OK. The rest of the stuff they didn't bring up with them was a little bit disappointed, but uh, they're going to post them up to me, so I seem like trustworthy characters. Back at the yard, having removed the body shell for yesterday's sale, George can't resist the opportunity for a natter about the Diane's famous suspension. Now, one of the most noticeable things about this car is that the suspension is ridiculously soft. And this is because it's pretty much basically a 2CV, which was designed for French farmers to drive across ploughed fields in their clogs. And one of the design briefs when they built a 2CV was that it had to carry a basket of eggs across a field without breaking them. And another thing about this suspension is that it's independent left and right. So if you hit a bump on the left rear corner, the right one stays where it is. However, they are interconnected front and rear. So if you hit a bump on that front corner, it travels through this cylinder here where there's, there's springs in here and it adjusts the rear suspension, which is really clever, especially if you think these were built just after the Second World War. Tech talk done, there's a sailor foot. Although it's not the suspension, but the Diane steering rack that's attracted trike nut Joe. I've come to uh, buy a new rack for my trike. Hopefully um, it's going to be the right one and it's going to be a decent price. So I'll get to see Sheldon in a minute and see if it's any good. All right, so how you doing? All right, I'm Well, Sheldon. this is the said part. Looks right. Yeah. It's pretty good. If we can maybe just check. Is it lifting? Come forward with it. Excellent. Oh, wow. So it's a... What, that's a Mock Guzzi bike engine? Yeah, the Motor Guzzi 1000cc V-twin. All mounted into the original Diane chassis with the Diane gearbox. It looks aged. Well, I've not cleaned it since I took it out of the chicken coop. Let's go have a look to see where that rack was. It's down inside there. It does look similar. Yeah, that's the one. I'm quite happy with that. So, what was the price on this? Uh... Call it 50 quid. Deal. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, it turned out to be the right rack. That's really good. I'm very happy. I got it for £50. I'm really happy. 50 quid for the steering rack. Joe rides off a happy man. But George and Sheldon are still a far cry from breaking even. It's the final day of the dismantle, and Ben is prepping for another sale. Because, believe it or not, Frankie may have found a buyer for their knackered engine. Hello, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I've still got yeah, I've still got the Citroen, yeah, the DS, yeah. I'll have a look. I mean, I've got a geezer now that's already working on it. I mean, he's my assistant. My associate. It will be ready for you to have a look at, and then we can talk about some money. Despite being as dead as a very deceased dodo, this is the coveted 2.1-litre engine with sought-after five-speed gearbox. That's a proper lamp, isn't it? So it's a dodo that should still fetch a price, if someone else is willing to do the work on it. And Tom Wagerlick might be that someone. 
I came to have a look at the engine, gearbox, uh, steering rack, and possibly some other bits for a Citroen DS. Uh, I'm not looking to spend much more than 60 quid. The engine at the DS, stripped especially for you by my young apprentice. Engine, gearbox, a steering rack down there, and that green thing, a little job lot to you. I'm looking for, say, 135. How do you I feel? was rather thinking about 50 quid for the scrap value of this lot. Tom, if that was a runner, I would totally agree. But in this case, maybe 60 quid, Tom, 70 quid. That's 70. what it, it is worth for me. No, yeah. Tom, no. I'm talking to you now, 90 shots, 90 pound. That's pound notes. 90 quid. Yeah. 90 quid. All right. Have we got a deal, Tom? Yeah. Thank you very much, my Thank son. You Thank you very much. much, Tom. Have you, uh, have you got the money? Yeah. I got the money. What, what credit cards? Yeah. Uh, no. No. So that's £90 for engine, gearbox and steering rack. It's only £910 shy of what the engine would have been worth, had it been a goer. But the boys are into profit. Just. It looks like there's an engine sale on the cars for Sheldon, too. And it's brought him and his Diane motor to rural Buckinghamshire. Well, today I'm off to um, a little place just on the outskirts of Milton Keynes, where I'm meeting a guy called Louis, who takes his two CVs and turns them into four-wheel drives and does off-roading in them. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he does it. More importantly, why? You can ask him yourself, because here's said punter, Louis Barber. We're all two CV people. Well, very long time, 30 years 2 CV. We convert them to four-wheel drive, put the bodies all back on it. It's a bit of business, but it's not really about the business. It really is about the, the fun of the cars, you know. We like the company, the travel, and we just kind of have a bit of a laugh. This engine, we haven't seen it, so not good news. We could pick a good one up for 150, but I, I think they want a lot and they ain't gonna get it, you know. It's not gonna happen. Oh, wow. <laughs> How are you doing, Louis? Hello, mate. Nice oh, to meet you. How are you doing? Right? I'm good. Go on then, what do you got? I'll tell you what I've got. I've got right. a lovely 2CV right. engine and I've got a gearbox. And I've right. even left. 2CV? Diane? Is there a Diane? Diane, okay. Right. Is there any yeah, difference? It's pretty similar, yeah, okay. I've left the carb on it, right. alternator, starter motor, discs, Shafts, yeah. and calipers. Right. Um, come think on, about we'll it. have a think about it. I mean, come on, have a, have right. a look at the cars. But Sheldon's keen to do his deals <laughs> on wheels. Gentlemen, start your engines. Put your foot down. It's a chance for Sheldon to give Citroen's egg-friendly suspension a real test. You got used to it then? Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, it's a nice bumpy ride. <laughs> yeah. Out of all the motors that are out there, why'd you use this one? This? Look, the 2 series got it all, you know. It's got the agility, it's got the lightweight. You can still buy them, they're cheap. They're dead simple to work on. Even if you break down in the middle of nowhere, you can, let's say, repair it. I mean, that one in front, that went from here to North Pole, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been at uh, North Cap, slowly, but yeah, twice, okay. twice. Well, that's a bit in cold. In the middle of winter. But Sheldon hasn't come along for a polite chat. He's here to make money. You know what? I've got to be straight with you. Um, you want to talk money? Yeah, let's talk. I money. thought you might want to ask that. You know. Yeah. Well, how low do you want to come? Do you want to go as low as you're driving? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm looking at 200 quid. <laughs> are you really? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you looking for it then? <laughs> Come on. I've been in this game too long to get mugged over. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. Put it up. I'll let's, on. let's cut a little deal, right? Go on. If you can do the whole course without getting stuck, I'll give you 175, right? If you get stuck, the money's coming down. Uh, but I'll give you a bonus, right? If Go you on. can do it really good, yeah. 200. All right. So I'm sticking my neck out. All right. Here. Let's shake. Let's All right. You've got to get around it. Cool. All right. At the end of the course, all that stands between Sheldon and 200 quid is a big muddy hill. Left, 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 go, 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 go,
It's been a good day. We've done a good deal. It's been a, been a, good, a, fantastic it's been a good to have you on board, as I say. He steered me right. He gave me some good advice. Gave me a lot of encouragement. And yeah, I'm not going to get beaten by a two CV, am I? Hello. God, getting out is harder than getting up the hill. Oh my God. That's 175 notes for the Diane engine, gearbox and brakes. The boys have finally touched profit, but Sheldon's got a long way to go to claim victory. Time is drawing to a close on the three days of dismantling and selling French motors. Ben and Frankie have bought an iconic, if shambolic, Citroen DS. The boys made healthy sales on bonnet, panels and assorted bits and even a few quid from a non-running motor. Thank you very much, my son. Thank you very much, Tom. And they've just broken the profit barrier. George and Sheldon bought a charming, if neglected, Citroen Diane. Minor sales on a job lot of parts and a steering rack kept them in contention. And an engine deal with Louis squeezed them into profit by a whisker. 175. I'm happy with that. There's not much in it. But a follow-up call from engine buyer Louis could help Sheldon tip the balance. <laughs> well, hello, Louis. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, it was a blast. Oh, you do want the chassis. Yeah, I thought you would. Look, well, why don't you just come down and have a look? With Louis shouldering the hefty transportation costs, Sheldon's sale of the rolling chassis with suspension comes to £25. That late trickle of coins into Sheldon's pocket marks the end of the French car challenge. It's time to weigh in the leftovers. There's nothing left of the Diane to crush, as George and Sheldon have flogged all but a single headlamp, which carries no scrap value. A rust-worn chassis is all that remains of Ben and Frankie's DS. With scrap going at £115 per tonne, a weight of 511 kilos equates to an extra 59 notes in the purse. But is it enough to tip the scales? Now, I'll resist the temptation to say the light's on but no-one's on because, well, it, it just isn't. So, uh, what's the problem then, lads? You a little bit nervous? No, we're not, as it happens. We parted up with 560 for this little bit of uh, French seaweed. Total sales, 789 nicker. Giving us a total profit of 229 sovereignios. Wallop. Ben and Frankie travelled far and took a huge financial gamble by buying a Citroen DS with untested engine and suspension. When both those major assets fail to work, they look to be facing a disaster. But a couple of bulk sales set them on the right track and the eventual sale of the knackered engine inched them into profit. Minor web and phone sales on items such as windscreen and boot lids added coins to the coffers. But with profit margins this tight, is it enough? George and I, we paid £500 for our lovely little Diane. <laughs> total sales... £610, which gives us a total profit of £110. With a car that practically came apart in his hands, George was on easy street from the start. But Sheldon's deals failed to deliver the big score. With sales on a job lot of panels and the engine falling short of the mark, Deals on the steering rack and chassis helped the boys avoid an embarrassing shortfall by inching them into profit. And a solitary web sale of one headlamp for just 10 quid proved to be the sour cherry on a rather small cake. Ultimately, the long haul trip for a cheap DS paid off, as even a faded icon minus key working tech proved more desirable than a 2CV wannabe. Ben and Frankie have swung it. So, uh, what we're actually saying is then that you've sold an old motor barring an headlamp and uh, you still lost. Mmm, impressive. So it was the right decision to make, you know, to go to France to buy that motor. And um, yet again, I have proved that I'm an international businessman. Well, we won, but just imagine if that engine was working. We would have thrashed them, just smashed them out of the park. 
to think I sold all those parts. Really put a lot of hard work into that, Diane. Don't always get it back, though, do you? Since the making of this programme, all the parts sold have gone on to live again. Ben's as pleased as possible.